Hello, welcome to T-Sport Burnout. Tom's cracking on with making the spare parts, but today we are starting a strip club because we're gonna strip all the weight out of the cab. So currently it's sat on the scales, it's reading. Let me get the scales on. 315, 316 kilo. Yeah, 315 kilo. Ask Tom what he thought how much weight we'd get out of it. So he's saying 125 kilo. I'm being optimistic. I'm going to say 140. You just see it on the back there. So we will get it off the scales, get it onto the ramp, and pull the doors off it, roof off it, and start stripping everything out of it to then turn it into a full out race truck cab. Uh, so the cage is done for it. This cab is brand fire new, never been fit to a truck, and it's the new shape with the three divots, so it's brand new from MAN. Um, the benefits of getting a brand new cab, rather than a scrap yard one, is it doesn't have all the glue in all the seams, so it's even lighter again, uh, and that's what we're sort of trying for, is to keep it as light as physically possible. It will probably take a few days to strip everything out, but it will uh, hopefully be nice and light uh, and then we'll do some extra bits like lightening the uh, door hinges and stuff like that and then once it's all been lightened uh, we'll send it for paint and then we will then hopefully get the tunnel in it as well so we've just ordered that today from the laser cutter so once that turns up we can finish that off as well so but yeah but Big thank you to MAM for supplying a brand new cab uh, fr from Germany. So it's um, a big help to us because we're not messing about with scrap yards and trying to find a, a good cab. And the problem is for new cabs as well, you can't get them from scrap yards because they're too new and no one's scrapping them at the minute. So it's, uh, well, yeah, we'll crack on with this and see how light we make it. <laughs> been a few days as you can see it looks exactly the same as before but we have actually took quite a lot of metal out of it also with the doors and we're going to weigh the doors now to see how much weight we got out of them uh, we're having a, a bet Tom's saying 20 kilo I'm going to say a little bit more modest at 18 kilo per door so we've still got a standard door there So the modified one is saying 16 kilos. Surely the uh, standard one's a lot heavier than that. Twenty-eight kilos. So it's 12 kilos lighter. That's that's quite disappointing. <laughs> All that weight of 12 kilos. So you might be asking, is it worth three hours per door for 12 kilos? Now, the old doors, they were a lot more easier to modify because all it was was one sort of plate there, which took the vibration out of it. So when you were driving down the road, it's not like rattling and banging. But the new ones, there's a lot more steel in them. So you've got like this crash structure on the top. And then there's like an anti sort of crush structure from the front impact, which goes all the way to the door handles at the back. I think this is a lot more for uh, the modern sort of health and safety when the trucks are initially designed, but it means that they're a lot harder to make light. Uh, now, 
12 kilos per door, it doesn't sound a lot, but when we're sort of finding 0 0.1 of a second per lap, this could be, hopefully, uh, the, the biggest difference. When they say, oh, they don't make them like the olden days, this system, I don't know what type of steel it is, but it's really hard. Uh, and I actually prefer the old doors because they're easier to lighten. Um, but saying that, these are a lot safer. Uh, but obviously we don't need the safety with the, with the race truck doors because we have the cage. Also, the other reason why we cut all the weight out is if we are in a crash and it gets dented or damaged, we can actually straighten it out really quick and easy. And on the race truck, you can see it's had a bit of a, a rub in the last race. So, and you can see it's really easy to get in with a hammer and just straighten that out. You can see how much steel we have collected. Uh, that's everything from the cab, even the roof is lighter. So the, the big frame on the bottom, that's all from the roof. And you can see the roof is just a single skin. Uh, and it's really flexible. I don't know if you can you see that. Uh, so we're not too worried about the flexing of the roof because obviously we'll bolt it to the cab structure, but also on the roll cage, we have these little pins. Uh, we'll put bolts through them uh, and then the roof will get bolted onto that. So that is the lightest the cab's ever going to be. So we're going to start putting out like the window plates in so it's uh, better for the stickers, but it's on the scales. So originally it was 315. It's 177. So it's a saving of 138 kilos. So Tom's not very happy, but I won the challenge. So Tom guessed 125, I was 140. It was a complete and utter guess. I thought I was going to be miles away after only saving 12 kilos per door. Wasn't best pleased about that. But now it's like sort of ready for the tunnel. As you can see, it's the lightest cab ever. So I think, uh, I don't think we've made one lighter than this before or an MEM one as this light. Uh, it would be lighter again if we could get just panels because a lot of this is like triple skinned um, and you can save quite a lot of weight again just by getting the panels you actually need rather than cutting an original one up but because this cab's so new uh, it's really hard and really expensive just to buy it in panel form it's been about a week since we last showed you the cab me and willow are smashing it in the workshop today so the tunnel's in, cage is in, okay, it's roughly bolted in. We've got motor drive seats coming in the next day or two, but now you can sort of see how much bigger this tunnel is if you've never seen a race truck before. So you can see this hole here. This is where the uh, gear lever's gonna go and all these uh, control valves that the driver moves about during a race. Obviously the seating area for Antonio. Then get a bit closer to this hole is actually for the steering control arm to uh, go to the 90 degree, 90 degree up to the driver. So you'll see all that come into place now. So the next sort of step is the pedal box, throttle pedal, um, and sort of setting some of the controllers in the correct position. The hole for the back for all the wiring loom, that's already been cut out. So it took, about, took Tom about a week to get it to this stage from where we last saw it. Uh, and you can see how much bigger this tunnel is compared to the old one and how much lighter it is. So now you can see there's so much more strength on this front panel from only from the roll cage. So therefore this doesn't have to be as strong as what the original one was. Um, but we, we do put like a seam down the middle just to give it some more strength because when you press some of the switches, it can put a lot of force on the top tunnel and you don't want it moving about or bouncing when you're driving. And then that is designed to allow as much air flow as possible into the intercooler and into the radiator. We can maybe see on the old race truck that in the hole, hopefully, you can see the intercooler, the water jets, and then further down is the um, sort of radiator. 
and this, this is obviously everything's as smooth as possible to allow as much airflow through the cooler as possible um, and yeah that's the sort of general idea and because the engine's not where it should be it's in the back so it allows us to play with this space to get as much flow as possible we have changed it a little bit from the old one so we've got some different ideas for this one but generally the next step is uh, seating and uh, the all the gear levers we've we've got everything prepped so uh, we will put the cab feet on put it onto the chassis and then once it's on the chassis then we can start doing some of the uh, wiring stuff and, and just to make sure that the cable lengths are correct so